Hey all, this is Derek and this is section 5.3. This is going to be uh, transformations on quadratics and we're then also going to look at something called vertex form which is kind of one of the two forms we're going to work with primarily and this one's really convenient for graphing. So um, let's look at the square function. Uh, square function we've been doing lots with them. It's it's saying x squared, right? And if you think about kind of what that table, you know, just y equals x squared would look like. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Uh, negative 2 squared, realize that that is a quantity squared, not negative 2 and then squared. So that's going to be a positive 4, and we're seeing that over here on this side. Uh, negative 1, again, quantity squared is 1, right there. x is 0, y is 0. And then we're going to get matching points uh, symmetric on the other side. And so x squared is an even function, and it's even power, and it has that y-axis symmetry. Uh, its range, if, if nothing has been shifted around, you know, domain's all real numbers, we can put anything into the squared, but because it's squared, we can't get anything less than zero out. So domain's gonna be uh, from zero to infinity, including the zero. Um, that said, now we're gonna pick this thing up, shift it around, stretch it, move it about. Um, and do those same transformations that we've seen on uh, roots and absolute values, but just now on, on parabolas as well. Um, let's see. So the way that, um, before I leave this nice little grid version, the way that I copy this thing around, what works for me, is when I find my vertex, that's, that's this point right here at zero, zero, you know, we're going to move that, say, down here. Um, I think over one, up one to get to my first two points. And then from that one, it's over one, up three, because we're going one more to the right and we're going from one to four. So that's three boxes. So from here, I'm just over one, up three, over one, up three. So when I'm doing this on paper, that's kind of where I'm mumbling about over one, up one, over one, up three. That's what I'm doing is I'm just copying that shape, which you'll see me do in the next pages. When you guys do this on the computer, it's a bit easier because you're going to click on the vertex and then a the second point and it's going to draw it for you. Um, but on paper, here's what it would look like. So if you're watching this video in a quarter, we're actually back on campus and it's a paper test. This is sort of more what I'd be looking for. Okay, so for this first one, we got x squared plus 2. Um, remember when we messed around on the outside of the function, so this time we're adding something plus or minus on the outside, that's our, our up and down shift. And we messed around on the inside of the function, that was our left and right shift. It's like here, you can see if I put in when x is 1, 1 squared would be 1 plus 2 makes 3. So it goes from 1 up to 3. So that's our, our vertical. So normally we start at 0, 0. This one is plus two, so it's gonna be shifted up two when x is zero, y would have been two. And then we just, instead of doing all the, we just copy the shape. So that's where I do the over one, up one, over one, up three, or for you on a computer, you just click on the vertex and then a second point, and I think it draws it for you, which is, like I said, much nicer than doing it on paper as I am. Um, so this one, same shape, but now that minus three, that's going to move it opposite the way we think. It's going to move it right three. That's because if I put three in there, three minus three would make zero. That's taking that zero point and moving it over here to three. And then we're just making that same shape. And then there's our transform parabola. Uh, this one we got a negative in front, so that's our reflect um, about the x-axis. So it's going to um, with parabolas, we say they're opening up or opening down. And so if it's a negative x squared opening down, positive x squared opens up. Um, we want to do, remember, reflections come before up or down shifts, and that can get a little bit confusing. So think of this as our parent function is like right there, right? And then if I do just the negative x squared part, that would be right here. So think of that happening first, so it's oriented correctly, and then move everything down one, because other, otherwise you're like, wait, do I move down one? And then, and you can start getting kind of mixed up as to whether or not, where the thing should land, basically. So now that we're opening down, we move the entire function down one, and that'll just be right here. So that red one's what you're shooting for. 
And then over here we have, uh, this one is gonna be down four, and plus would be left two. So take our vertex and go down one, two, three, four, and left two, we start a new point, and then just copy the shape. Okay, and then so here we have our, our vertical stretch and our vertical shrink. Um, again, if we think of kind of what our parent function would look like, let me get that one drawn in. And so what this four in front does is basically just makes all the y values four times as big as they used to be. So negative one, zero, one, negative one squared would be one times four is four, Zero squared is still zero, is still zero. One squared would be one times four is four. You can see if I try to put in two, two squared would be four, and then I'm all the way up at 16 and I'm way off the graph. So basically it's just that stretch, it's making everything, all the values four times bigger than they would have been. So four times zero is zero, four times one, that just makes this little stretch of four right here. So for the parabolas, the stretches and the shrinks are actually now the shrinks can be a little bit trickier, but the stretches are pretty easy. Instead of over one up one, it's over one up however much this is. So if that was a three X over one up three, it's a four over one up four. And it's just showing that first stretch. So here at the one half, that can be a little bit trickier. Again, let me draw the parent one in, just so I have it as a reference and point at it. Um, what this is doing is then kind of cutting all these y values in half. So that first point lands on a fraction, which is hard to graph, particularly on the computer. But if you come out to the second point, it used to be when you put in two, you got out four. Now you would get half that much because a half cuts it in half. So you're only going to get out two. So that's the, the vertex and the point I'd probably use to graph this one on the computer. And so then your final will kind of look like this flattened version, like that. Okay, so then we got these last couple. Um, that third is a little bit tricky again. So I would kind of figure out what to do with y equals one third x squared, get that kind of fixed in my head, and then do the rest of it. So here, um, you know, zero is still gonna be zero. If I put in one, I get a fraction. If I put in two, I'm getting a fraction. So I'm going out to three, because that one seems like it's going to be easiest. Three squared would give me a nine, and then third and nine would make three. And that gives me my second point. And again, you're not really graphing this you're, um, until you do the rest of the shift, because on the computer, you're just graphing the final answer. But that's kind of what I'm thinking to get myself orientated so when I get it moved, then I, I know what my shape looks like. Hopefully that made some sense. So basically I'm doing X is zero, Y is zero. I didn't like one and two because they're going to make the numbers hard. So I picked three, three squared for nine, one third, that made three. So for my vertex, I got to go over three and up three, and then that's going to give me that next point. Um, and with that, this is going to go down two, and then minus one means right one. So there's my new vertex, and then I just over three and up three. And then that would, on the computer, automatically fill in what I'm going to attempt to draw here. But something kind of like, ah, uh, something like that. And then this one, so this is the, the fractions are definitely harder. The whole number is pretty easy because we'll just go over one, up two instead of up one or down one in this case. Um, so we got, let's see, up five. We have left four. And then it's going to open down because of the negative and then stretch by two. So let's get over to our vertex. We're going to go left four and up five would be right there. It's going to open down. And then this two is just going to make it stretch by a factor of two. So that's, that would be it.